I was wondering, what's inside a water filter? And the only way I can think of finding out, uh, initially when you look at the uh, the drawings and the sides of the packets, it shows all the different layers of filters and things like that. But now I'm looking at it, I can see this dry one, I can see all this sort of powder rolling about inside. So um, let's open it. First thing I notice is this um, gasket, which is quite neat. It's got a little rubber O-ring for the seal at the top. It's got what they call a coarse filter and it points to these slots. Now, yes, I suppose technically speaking that is a coarse filter. But, uh, let's uh, get a knife and open this. I'm going to use a super industrial knife for this. And I'm going to cut towards myself in a menacing manner. Okay, so here's the fine filter inside, which is just a, a nylon mesh, heats it as sealed on. And the inside appears to be little granules. Light coloured granules and dark ones. I'm guessing the dark ones. Have I got a tub here? And then the output, uh, you've got these granules, and then the output is just these uh, slots at the bottom with that more nylon mesh sort of fused over them from the inside. And that's it. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at this. Now, these granules are a mixture of what they call ion exchange resin, I believe, and activated charcoal. The activated charcoal tends to absorb impurities to a degree, while the the resin here is what they call ion exchange resin, I believe. And the point of the ion exchange resin is it's kind of preloaded with sort of sodium, and when other metals attach to it, like magnesium or undesirable metals, that well, they're what they consider as undesirable metals, when an ion of the undesired metal attaches to it, it then liberates an ion of sodium instead to replace it. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not, but it's supposed to make the water softer, which is the main feature of that, I think. So um, I'm wondering what will happen if I add water to this. Will it actually swell up? I'm going to put a mark in the side, and then I'm going to add some water. So I'm just going to... Tamp that down slightly, put a mark on the side of the height of it, add some water and see if it swells up. I shall be back shortly. Several minutes of soaking later and it seems to have bulked out by almost 50%. It's notably sort of filled up um, and formed a sort of like that, almost like a, not quite a non-Newtonian fluid, but when you disturb it, uh, you get that sort of like the, the water sort of sits on top, but then um, when you poke it, um, the stuff displaces up through it. Like sand, I suppose, really, which is ultimately, in a way, sand is also used as a filtering agent. But let's get a bit of paper, and uh, I shall uh, put a smear of this onto the paper, and then I'll draw you what I see when I look through a microscope at it. So a bit of paper, and I'm just going to take a pinch of the stuff and just smear it all over it. Ugh. Right, uh, microscope and a pen. Right, the little uh, the ionic exchange resin is very round. It's just little spheres, and the charcoal is very sharp and ragged looking. Obviously designed to interlock together. For the filtration. Okay, so I shall draw that. The ionic exchange resin, the white stuff or this sort of creamy coloured stuff, is just basically spheres, randomly sized spheres. Um, whereas the charcoal is just very jagged pieces like that, obviously designed to sort of uh, form a close knitting interlock. It's presumably just crushed from a solid block. And again, it's like really small bits and really big bits. So uh, a whole random uh, arrangement. Now, I noticed when I added the water to this and 
tapped it down that the by default the carbon seems to settle out. If this is the dish, the carbon seems to settle out at the bottom, preferentially, with the um, the spheres of the resin uh, sitting on top. You still get a dispersion of the black through the, the sort of white, but it does form distinct layers. So I'm guessing that in, in this filter, uh, when it's actually filled with liquid, the, the charcoal will tend to precipitate down to the bottom and it will go through as a multiple uh, series of layers. Presumably with the uh, charcoal being so ragged and close-knit that it does take quite a modest time for the liquid to actually travel through and a lot of the uh, solid impurities will just get trapped. Um, that would also suggest that if you wanted to clean one of these out, you can't really reload the carbon or the ion exchange material, but if you tapped it to loosen it and then washed it, you could actually maybe sort of get, if you're just looking to remove large particulate, then you could probably clean that out and reuse it to a degree. But, um, yes, that was quite interesting and well worth doing.